Hi everyone. Up until now, the uniaxial tensile testing, stress strain curves, and their data interpretations at video number 2.1, and toughness, fracture toughness, and notch toughness concepts at video number 2.2 were covered. In this video, Rockwell, Brinell, Vickers, and Knob hardness tests will be covered. So, let's start. Hardness is briefly the resistance of a material to indentation and it is measured by simpler testing methods compared to the rest of the mechanical tests in terms of the experimental procedure and the data analysis. One of the major advantages of hardness tests over the rest is that there is not a specific specimen geometry requirement. So long as the part fits to the setup, hardness tests can be conducted on it. Otherwise, a small sample can be taken from the parts and the test will be conducted on it. Yet, before the hardness test, we must check and make sure that the surface of the specimen and the indenter are clean and free of contamination. For some hardness tests, even metallographic surface preparation can be needed. During hardness testing, the indenter starts to move in Z minus direction. As it touches the specimen's surface, it begins to penetrate through the surface of the material and the size of the indentation mark left on the specimen's surface is measured, and it is correlated to the hardness of the material. As a rule of thumb, the larger the size of indentation, the softer the material is, or vice versa. The hardness of a specimen is determined by collecting hardness data from several points over its surface. However, it should be noted here that each indentation mark left over specimen's surface will cause localized plastic deformation zones. So, to bypass the effects of these localized plastic deformation zones on the hardness values, the succeeding indentations should be located away from the previous ones. A large variety of hardness tests employing different indenter geometries and materials and or applying different loading conditions were designed. When there are a lot of hardness tests available, their categorization looks inevitable. So, hardness tests are categorized under two branches that are macro and micro hardness. For macro hardness methods, Rockwell and Brinell hardness tests will be investigated in this video. Rockwell hardness tests represents a large family of hardness tests made of a lot of sub branches, which are categorized according to the applied load and the size, geometry, or the material of the indenter. Most commonly employed Rockwell test scales are B and C scales, which are employed for softer and harder materials, respectively. The indenter employed in Rockwell B and C tests have a conic shape and a sharp tip. The hardness values for Rockwell tests are calculated using HR equals to N minus D divided by S equation, where D is the depth of indentation in millimeters, N and S are the scale factors, which are predetermined for each Rockwell test scale. N is a dimensionless number and is equal to 130 for Rockwell B and 100 for Rockwell C scale, and S is equal to 0.002 mm for both. The load applied for B scale is 100 kg force and it is 150 kg force for C scale. Kilogram force is a unit that is equal to the magnitude of force applied per kilogram of material under standard gravitational acceleration. And 1 kilogram force is equal to 9.81 newtons. After indenter moves up, the depth of the left indentation mark is measured and the hardness value is calculated. Although the Rockwell hardness values are dimensionless, we still have to be able to distinguish them from each other. So, a simple notation for Rockwell scales is developed. Hardness values reported in Rockwell B scale are reported as HRB, number of hardness, and values reported in Rockwell C scale are reported as HRC, number of hardness. Here are some of the testing standards commonly used for Rockwell hardness tests. Brinell hardness test is the other macro hardness test that will be covered in this video. A wide range of load can be applied during Brinell hardness test. This enables Brinell test to cover a huge interval of hardness values, allowing the utilization of this method for most of the materials, so long as the material dimensions and the purpose of testing aligns with Brinell method. 
Renal hardness tests are abbreviated as HBW for the tests where tungsten carbide indenture is used and as HBS where steel indenture is used. In general, tungsten carbide indenture is used for hard materials and steel indenture is used for softer materials. The Brinell hardness values are also reported in megapascal. During Brinell hardness tests, a spherical indenture having a 10 mm diameter applies the selected amount of force to the surface of the material and leaves a circular indentation mark. After measuring the diameter of the indentation mark left on material surface, the equation given on the screen is used for calculating the corresponding Brinell hardness value. In this equation, 0.102 is a dimensionless correction factor, F stands for the applied load in newtons, capital D stands for the diameter of the indenter in millimeters, and small case D stands for the diameter of the indentation mark left on the specimen's surface in millimeters. Renal hardness values are reported as shown on the screen. Here, pound signs stand for the calculated hardness value in megapascal. The W in HBW and S in HBS stands for the material that the indenture is made of. Double X stands for the diameter of the indenture in millimeters. Quadruple Y stands for the applied force in kilogram force. Before moving to the micro hardness tests, here are the commonly employed testing standards for Brinell hardness testing. The other test branch is the micro hardness, for which the Vickers and knob tests will be covered. The indenters used in these methods are diamond shaped pyramids with different diagonal aspect ratios. For the Vickers hardness test, an Equiex diamond pyramid indenture is used. The hardness values obtained by this method are labeled as Vickers pyramid number and abbreviated as HV and are reported in megapascal. HV is equal to applied force over the area of the indentation mark. The applied force is already known, but the area of the indentation mark is not. For the calculation of the area of indentation mark, the size of the diagonal length of indentation mark is measured in millimeters under a microscope. Since the specific angles between the surface of the pyramid indenter and the base plane are known, with the help of simple geometry, then the trigonometry, the area of the indentation mark is found to be equal to d squared divided by 2 sine 136 degrees divided by 2, which is equal to d squared divided by 1.8544. Then f over a is found to be equal to 1.8544 f divided by d squared. Here, f is reported in kilogram force and area in millimeter square. HV has the units of kilogram force per millimeter square, and it can be converted to megapascal by dividing this formula or the calculated hardness value by specific gravitational acceleration, and the resulting formula will be equal to HV equals to 0.1891 force in newtons divided by d square in millimeter square, which will be equal to megapascal. Hardness values for Vickers are reported as given on the screen. Pound signs stand for the measured Vickers hardness number. HV stands for the hardness scale. Double X stands for the applied loading kilogram force. And lastly, double Y stands for the loading time in seconds. More details about the Vickers hardness testing process and the parameters can be found in the testing standards given on the screen. Knob hardness test is the last micro hardness test we will be covering. Similar to Wickers, a diamond pyramid indenter, but this time having a 7 to 1 diagonal aspect ratio is used for knob hardness test. During testing, the indenter hits the material surface and is held there for a specific time before removing it. The knob hardness is represented as HK and has the units of kilogram force divided by millimeter square or megapascal, and is calculated using the hk equals to p divided by cp times l square equation, where p is the applied force in kilogram force or in newtons, cp is a correction factor that depends on the shape of the indenter and is generally equal to 0.700279,
and L stands for the length of indentation along the long axis in millimeters and is measured under a microscope. Since very small loads are employed for knob hardness test, it can be used for measuring the hardness of very small specimens, coatings, precipitates, or secondary phases present in materials. More details about proper utilization of knob hardness test can be found in the testing standards on the screen. In this video, four hardness tests of many have been covered. It can be quite tough to determine the hardness test that will be suitable for your specimen or the purpose of your characterization. So, make sure to properly evaluate your specimen and the advantages and the disadvantages offered by each test before choosing the hardness test for your specimen. At this point, you may be thinking that having so many hardness tests is such a good opportunity for us to collect reliable data for a wide range of materials. But when there are this many hardness tests, how can we compare the hardness values obtained from them? Luckily, this question was asked by other people before we did it, and was also answered, and turned into a visual that is presented on the screen. Let's remember the definition of hardness. It was the resistance of a material to indentation, which can be thought as the resistance of a material to plastic deformation via indentation. So, materials having low hardness values are expected to show less resistance to indentation and high plastic deformation, such as most polymers do. Or, the materials with high hardness values will show high resistance to indentation, since they have little or no plastic deformation, similar to ceramics. And some materials like metals and alloys will show resistance to indentation in between these two extremes. Besides the hardness scales that are covered in this video, there is another important reference hardness scale called Mohs Scale of Mineral Hardness, which is mostly used for qualitative comparison of materials scratch resistances. Before wrapping up this video, there is one last thing waiting for us to cover that is the empirical correlations formed between some of the hardness scales and the tensile strengths of materials. This correlation is observed for Brinell and Vickers hardness tests. For most of the steels, the tensile strength estimation in megapascal is equal to 3.45 times the measured Brinell hardness value in megapascal. For Vickers hardness values, the tensile strength estimation in megapascal can be done by dividing the Vickers hardness in megapascal by 30. With this said, we have reached the end of the video. In this video, hardness tests were covered. In the upcoming video, 3 and 4 point bending tests will be covered. See you next time!